this is going to be for your first first opportunity for these teams to see each other and to see who can move to 2-0 and in the Ivy League and, and get a top of the standings early. And early on, it will be Ye who wins the initial face-off. That's probably going to be the uh, story for the entirety of this game, at least at the face-off. Ye, one of the best 2022 Pennsylvania High School Player of the Year award for lacrosse. And after not seeing the field, um, at the beginning of the season now comes in for Danny Cadigan at attack and absolutely if they could keep this to a 50-50 kind of game in the faceoff they should be in you know in really good shape but that's going to be easier said than done yeah, and already coach Busek has switched to Angelo Petrakis at the faceoff top but still Rodriguez wins that faceoff three straight faceoff wins for Yale to start off this game in regulation to give Cornell that 15-14 win over the Tigers but again faceoff going to be the key for Cornell to just try and get some possessions and Rodriguez almost got one on cage. But a flag flies as Rodriguez is also on the ground. Cornell trying to be physical with Yale early on. And this one a little bit too physical results in laundry. I didn't see the play. I was watching the rebound come out front. Must have been late um, as he comes right down the middle. Yeah, and even there you can't quite see it. Yeah, it looks like Jason Singer Rotate a little bit too late to lay the check on Rocky on Jason Singer, showing off. Hats off to the Cornell defense, killing off a three-minute unreleasable penalty on Jason Singer, showing off a George Boyardi-like defensive effort to prevent Yale from scoring on that opportunity. Of course, Cornell playing with some heavy hearts last week on the 20th anniversary of George Boyardi's passing and how fitting that Matt Dooley, the defenseman, gets the game winner for them to win against Princeton 15-14. Yeah, and, you know, in some ways it's it's amazing to think 20 years. Brad Cornell for getting this field ready. This game was moved back initially scheduled for 12 o'clock, but because of the weather, we're playing at 2 p.m. And uh, get the hats. you can see the, the snow piles on the far side of your of having that long pole is the ability to be further from the guy you're covering and when he gets in that tight um, he's not able to we've got a whistle hold on yeah we'll give this ball to Cornell so you know when he's able to get in there his dad played uh, hockey here at Cornell uh, class of I think 93 uh, Big Red will be in the ECAC championship for hockey tonight against St. Lawrence in Lake Placid New York and a great comeback win for that men's hockey program with a levy of five. He, got, he sort of started dodging before the defender even kind of broke down and got into position and just went right underneath him. Remember, that's Jax Follows, reigning second team, all Ivy League player from last year. Brandau wants another one quickly and couldn't quite get it on K. The shot advantage over the big red. The big red efficiency in the riding has kept this game tied up at four. Yeah, I mean, we, you Yale out shooting Cornell 18 to eight. A lot of that came in that extra man opportunity in the first quarter. Uh, Yale winning six of nine faceoffs compared to three of nine for Cornell. Yale two of three on the clear. Cornell four of six. Uh, our goaltender saves through the first quarter. Matt Tully for Yale. Excuse me, for Cornell has five. Paquette has three for Yale. And a faceoff battle continues to be ever more prevalent for both of these teams. And Mark Silos with a big faceoff win to begin quarter number two. And it's been interesting for Cornell trying to overcome the loss of Jack, Jack Cascadden for the year. And a violation will put this to Cornell. And now the Big Red have an opportunity to gain a little bit of momentum. And boy, has he taken that opportunity and absolutely flown with it. Lightning quick. Lightning quick as a player. Seems so comfortable at X, and I, I think the thing that's nice about that is you, you, you are, that was a chance where he was able to be in front of the cage. And Cornell, I'll tell you, Mar Mark Silos is battling for everything he can get, and he's been really animated. You feel like he's taking it personally that Cornell's got to do everything they can to negate what coming into the game now taking a turn for the Cornell Big Red. It's because of the face-off dot that Cornell has gotten some of these extra possessions. This time it's Machado Rodriguez who wins against Mark Silas. But before that, I mean, they've, they've looked for answers with uh, out Chris Lyons and Leo Johnson, two of the best attack men who have been out due to injury for and the again, entire season. And again, Silos loses the draw but stays with it and battles, intercepts the pass. 
and gets Cornell a possession. So again, that's going to be one ro rotating, and that's what created the space inside. It was Ramsey now onto the faceoff dot for the Bulldogs, changing things up. Wasn't the number one last year for Yale, but has ceded that position to Machado Rodriguez, and it's Aiden Blake on the wing who initially picks up the ground ball, but a good job from Cool to rotate all the way That's around. That's a flag. Yeah, and Walker Wallace will go to the box if Yale doesn't score here. Now both teams have put together 3-0 three, 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 runs, so Cornell's got to get a stop, stop the run. And this faceoff, oh so important, eventually picked up by Patrick Hackler. And they won't. That goal will stand. At, and this is another big faceoff because Cornell, again, still man up for at least momentarily. And Machado Rodriguez does a great job to ride the two on three disadvantage and gain possession for the Bulldogs. Of, you know, the premier ones of the Tullys, the Firths, the Nicolex. But now Ryan Goldstein into that attacking role for his first career start with the Big Red has absolutely shown up and is on fire. His second career hat trick in only his second game with the Big Red. Well, freshman scoring five of the seven Cornell goals in the first half. An incredible youth display now on tap for Coach Busek. A trampoline today. It seems like every time it hits the net, they've all been just popping yeah, right out. back out, yeah. And this face off. Uh, Ramsey with the win there for yeah. Yale. And it gets back to Jack Stusen. That's important. Pushes it past the cage. And we are back to a two goal advantage for Cornell. Boy, Rodriguez gets it out quick there. But again, but Cornell. Yeah, Brendan Staub gets the ball out of the stick. And it's Aiden Blake who picks up the ground ball. The wing play for Cornell winning that faceoff. And Blake all the way over to Long who scores! That is opportunity, opportunity taken advantage of by Cornell. Aiden Blake with the nice look across the field here. And he just stepped, I mean, talk about three crow hops. I mean, you don't usually know Michael Long for his long range prowess at goal. And he lowers the head, rips it and scores. And Cornell matches his largest lead of the day with a three goal advantage over the Bulldogs. And again, it was the face-off battle. It wasn't a clean win. And here, Silos gets another possession for Cornell. Gets the clean win. Is pushed out of bounds by Christian Johnson. Nothing coming after that. And Charlie Bach. 12-8, the lead for the Cornell Big Red. A violation will give Cornell possession once again here as the Cornell Big Red have now exploded and on fire to just on. And that's unfortunate if you're Cornell, a failed clear, sort of you had a transition opportunity and just unable to, to corral it. And then right back, you get Rodriguez, gets the face-off win, so they try to play a little make it, take it. Rodriguez will keep silos on the field for now, but instead we'll just hand it off to Brandau. Um, you're just going to have to keep making plays. I mean, when you talk to both coaches, you could sense that they knew that both teams were going to go a run, on a run at some point. Rodriguez will win again, hand off to Brandau, who finds Cool and got it in cage. And here is that Yale run. A three-goal run for the Bulldogs has shrunk the lead immediately to only one. Well, and you're, you're talking, right, this is how explosive these offenses are. We're talking three goals in the span of 41 seconds here. And that's the hat trick for Carson Cool as Just well. Just the classic fast break, your L break sort of steps in. He's able to find the bottom base. Again, curling to get a little bit more angle on that shot. But again, that face-off battle continues to be important. And Mark Silos, not deterred by, but can be effective on the crease and does so there to make it a two-goal advantage once again. Oh, it's challenging it. They're challenging it if it was a goal. And this is one of, again, those new rules in College lacrosse, they have become the number one seed for the Ivy League heading into the Ivy League tournament. Two of the best teams in the Ivy League, number eight Yale, number 12 Cornell, 
resume is very similar as well as the first faceoff of the fourth, fourth quarter. We'll go to Cornell as Michael Long is the one who picks it up. I mean, something we haven't uh, talked about, Christian Nguzman here along. He's usually the most likely, I think, so far in this season to draw the pole. And here he's pretty consistently, they've been putting Firth uh, with the pole. But again, not to be outdone, Nicholas Ramsey comes back, gets the faceoff win for Yale. And remember, this is the two-headed monster that Yale has to face off about because Ramsey was the number one faceoff guy for the past two seasons for the Bulldogs. Came up to face off against Silos. As Silos directs traffic, you see Luke Gilmartin all alone on the upper wing because of that man up opportunity. And Ramsey picks up the huge win, but uh, here comes the ride coming, and Staub and Gilmartin. Well, and I think he put his cross against his chest. They didn't yeah. call it. I thought that was withholding from play. So now game of his Cornell career. The freshman from Radnor, PA, has seven goals, and he hasn't played 120 minutes yet with the Cornell Big Red. And Silos coming out the front. Enjoying his time in Ithaca. Now we gotta remember that Rodriguez is quite an, a weapon here, but Silos neutralizes him. And Silos thought about going right down Broadway. I think with a five goal lead and eight minutes left, that's a good decision. That Cornell has shown off, has become so prevalent throughout this entire season, once again comes to life. And a violation here, a kick ball will go against Mark Silos and give the ball to Yale. But this is a Cornell offense that you know, you, we talked about it during the break. Once it gets a little bit of rhythm, it's so hard. That's the game for Krefsky. Ramsey at the X this time. Working up against Silos. First time we've really seen this type of battle, a contested battle between the two face-off men. And this one will go in favor of Cornell as Luke Gilmartin is right there to pick it up. Gilmartin thinks about going himself, but will instead Good decision. Back, it, back it up. And once again, we come back to the face-off dot. And there's Yale's 20th face-off win of the game. Unsettled situation here. Hackler wants to go quickly, but can't get the bouncer past Tully. Huge, That's a big save. Huge save for Tully, picking up his 13th save of the game. Now in this game. As of late, they've been sticking with Nicholas Ramsey, the Bulldogs, and it's worked out. But this time, it's a big face-off win for Mark Silos. Silos trying to play physical. And eventually, he finds Walker Wallace to give him a little bit of breathing room. Patrick from Michael Long, CJ Kirst, and Ryan Goldstein. Can't say enough about the job that number 30 in white has done in just the beginning.